Okay guys, so we are in a really exciting property right now in an exciting area with really exciting prospects. So this is a two bed flat in the London borough of Hackney near Islington, which has the highest capital growth of 2020 of 13% growth on your investment. So if you've seen some of the other property reviews that we've done in the past, this is not your standard property. I mean, we are dealing with uh, usually properties that you can smell before you can actually see it. Whereas you can see from this, it's, it's really nice. You know, I mean, it's not like high spec or anything like that, but it's nice, you know, like it's, there's not a lot to say. So we're in the sort of front room right now where we've got the kitchen. Now what's quite common in London, you've seen me doing a lot in Leeds and surrounding areas around Wakefield is obviously split levels and separate kitchen and stuff like that. In London, it's very standard to have the lounge and the kitchen together, okay? Very, very common. And so even with the older flats, people would buy a one bed and split it into a two bed configuration. So it's really nice. You've got the sort of kitchen there. This is where the lounge area would be. The, you can see all of the TV points are set up down there. So you'd probably have like a sofa there, bit of maybe a table there, and then the TV in the corner. Decent enough views for London, I would say. And I really do like these full, sort of open windows and things like that that you've got in here. Bear in mind, this is a 70 square meter two bed flat, which might not sound like a lot, but for London is quite big. And I think features like that really just opens up the space. So let's jump into the first bedroom. So this is the master bedroom that we're in now. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it's a big space. You know, you've got some built in wardrobes here that you can definitely fit a few people in. That sounded better in my head, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but a decent amount of space there. And then as you come around here, you'll see as the layout goes on, but you'd have the bed behind you, probably have the TV around here. You've got the point down there, bit of artwork, which actually you can see here where they've done a really shit job of going over it um, on there. And again, these big doors, and it might not seem like much, but the sort of view over there is really nice. And it just sets so much natural light coming in, especially on a day like today. And then as we sort of come back around here, you can see the two plugs there, where I would, well, it looks like they did as well, I'd have the bed there coming out. And then maybe have like a desk space here or a, a changing, table i have no idea what they're called but for a london flat this is a massive room like you could easily fit a king size bed in here with no problem at all and i tell you what as two bed flats go the second bedroom isn't much smaller than this so as i said plenty of space in the second bedroom no i'm joking come on guys around here so with the second bedroom, honestly, for a London flat, this is incredible. So again, the first thing you're probably noticing going from the dark room to the light room is the amount of light coming in here. And again, these big windows that open up, um, just beautiful are coming in. And again, normally in a London flat, you just wouldn't expect rooms like this with these sort of sizes, but this is a large double room again. And I'm guessing from the situation here with the plugs down there, the double bed would be here. You'd maybe have space for some sort of artwork there on the room, on the wall and things like that. But overall, this is a really solid property. The thing I am noticing when I'm going around is the quality of the finish and the downside of a lot of these not new, because this isn't a new build, but relatively new flats, is the quality of finish isn't as qu quite as high as I would like it to be. So as bathrooms go, if you remember the last London property we did, which was in High Wycombe, right? And uh, maybe we could do a little cutaway to the bath there. I seem to remember the bath being a bit nicer there, but it was fucking freezing absolutely freezing whereas now i won't lie it's very warm and i could fall asleep in this bath but again the size of this absolutely massive this considering again it's a flat in london it's um it's nice it's a decent quality again you'll notice little things as we're going around like if you can look up here and all these blemishes it's nowhere near the level of finish that you would expect of a new build property. But again, this is sort of like 10, 15, 20 years on now. But still, it's a good bathroom and there's a lot you can do in here. If I were buying it to live in, which hmm, I like the location, I'd probably spend some money getting it fixed up. So 
So let's break down the numbers on this property. Now, this particular property was actually a chain break. So it had a buyer uh, buying the property anyway. It's going through legals and on the open market, chains are a really big thing. If you don't know what a chain is, it's when you're buying somebody else's property, they're buying another property, they're buying another one, they're buying another one, and they're all relying on the sale between them. And then the end of the chain is where the person's not relying on it, right? And a chain break is when somebody pulls out in between and you can't get in. So why is this good for a buyer? Well, there's a stamp duty exemption specifically created for saving a chain break, okay? So you're not needing to pay stamp duty if you save a chain break. Now, because of that, we're able to get this at a really reasonable price of £410,000. Now, once you take account of some holding costs, the legal costs, etc., etc., we're in for around four hundred. dollars 418,400, let's call it 419, let's round up, okay? So once we've taken account of that, you need to think about the rents in the area, what you're gonna be able to sell at. Now you can rent this in the thousands of pounds, okay? We're talking about 18,000 a year, but you've also got the fact it's a leasehold, okay? So because it's a leasehold property, you're gonna pay service charge on that, which is about 2,600 a year, which is, absolutely staggering for a monthly clean or a weekly clean in the communal area, right? But it really does impact your rental valuation. The interesting thing with this one, I think, is the range of valuations in the area. Now in Islington, in this particular area, this is borough of Hackney technically, the average price is 610,000, which is massively ambitious for this property. But it's really fluctuating here between really We've got two ricks on this property, a couple of agent valuations, and it's anything ranging from like 500 ish thousand all the way to 600,000. Ricks at 500, Ricks at 600. Well, where do you go from there? The thing is, actually, the accuracy is not much of a discrepancy. You know, if you go 500 to 550, you're like, well, that's a 50,000 pound range. It's like, well, yeah, I know. But at the same time, if you had a 60,000 pound property and you said, I reckon 60 to 66, you wouldn't bat an eyelid, right? But it's a 10% discrepancy. So the accuracy is really not changed but the price impact is huge. So you always need to be really careful with that. So available at 410, and really we are cautiously optimistic about those prices being completely transparent with you. Selling at 500,000 in a six month time frame, taking account of all the selling costs and the holding costs, we're looking at about 81,000 pound profit net. And if it sells for 530, which a bit ambitious, I think, but one a few floors up has just sold for 530, then it would make 111,000 pounds. So big risk property for a big reward. Okay, I can't do it seriously. Here's three things that I love about this property. So number one, <laughs> oh my God, is the size of this place. Like every single room in here is a large double at worst. And it really is a pleasant surprise going around the London flat that has been properly apportioned for the modern family. So number two is the area. I love the fact that it's become massively gentrified over the last decade or so, meaning that there's been a lot of investment in the infrastructure and the buildings around. All of the beautiful buildings, the development has brought up the property prices and the activity in the area in a fairly abundant basis. Now, a lot of locals don't typically like this happening because if you've been here long term, the more and more traffic and things like that, the culture changes. But it means one thing for property prices, and that is on the way up. Great transport links, great buildings, great amenities around there. And that is why Hackney and Islington in, in particular has gone up just 14% capital growth in one year. Number three is unknown quantities. Now, when I'm buying a property or you are, you're looking at the things that are unknown and the one thing you can guarantee in property is something will come up. Now often this is in the refurbishment of the property, right? But with this one, it's pretty much done. I mean, is it to a standard I would like on this sort of level? No, I maybe would have spent another couple of grand making sure it's perfect. But the point is, there's no pulling off the wallpaper and seeing the plaster come down. There's no checking the electrics are all up to regs, etc. Everything is absolutely spot on in this property in terms of the refurbishment. So it's an amazing property overall, but it's not all good. So the first reason is it's leasehold. Now, the reason I don't like leaseholds are 
the fact that you're having to pay service charge over £2,000 a year it is worthwhile to make sure it's all kept clean in the communal areas, but still annoying. Ground rent. You don't own the actual ground underneath the building, so you have to pay a ground rent to that. And number three is the actual management pack. So when you've got an agreement with your freeholder who owns the ground underneath you, it stops you doing certain things to the property. And when there are issues that come up with the whole block of flats, then you have to contribute towards them. Number two is fluctuation in valuation. Now we've gone through the numbers already, but to range from mid 500s up to 600,000 is a huge range when you think about it. And the tip that I give on that is if you are getting multiple numbers, you need to go with the most conservative unless it is absolutely ridiculous. A lot of people, they will buy at the most ambitious figure that they can get, and then they'll look at everything that they can chip down in between to make it work. And so when there's this much of a fluctuation, it makes me nervous. So the third thing I'm not a massive fan on is the fact it's a block of flats. Now, not the fact it's leasehold or anything like that, but obviously a sensitive subject. What happened in London with Grenfell Tower, it's awful. And it was all due to the cladding issues. And what it means with a block this size, which is around 15 floors, people get nervous about the cladding, which is on the outside, making sure it's fire resistant because, well, obviously you as a buyer, your, um, your lenders and the RIC surveyor are going to be really nervous about this. So what you need to make sure that is in place is the EWS1 form, which is the external um, wall fire review, okay? And this is done by a RIC surveyor. Now, the issue is if you don't have one, it's a bloody expensive because it's not just an individual. They'll do testing all around it. it Cost about £20,000 for that review. Now, obviously, you're not doing just going to pay that. It's for the whole block. So across all of those apartments, it probably ends up with a few hundred pounds each. But it's really bloody important for the lendability of that because you could have a lender on it, but not be able to get somebody to buy it with lending. So the reason it's so high in that 20 grand is it's a lot of risk for a surveyor to take on, isn't it? especially with Grenfell and the shit that went on around that. And so they get nervous about it. So make sure you've got the EWS one form, make sure it's signed off and it's absolutely fine. We did additional checks on this. We sent it to solicitors saying, if we gave this to you, would you be happy advising your client to buy with a mortgage? They said, yes. We sent it to lenders. They said, yes, that's fine. But you really do want to be careful. And even though it's got everything in place, still makes me a bit nervous having those any cladding issues or anything to do with a block of flats in London right now. So I'm going to rent it, flip it, live in it or avoid it. Well, let's take out avoiding it because I think this is a great location, great property and great growth prospects. Uh, I'm probably not going to rent this out simply because if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm not a massive fan of leasehold properties. It's got quite a large service charge and I just don't like unknown quantities. Am I going to live in it? No. Um, I do think it's a great location though. And if I were to live in London, this would definitely be, you know, in and around Islington. I think it's an amazing area to live. But for this, for the price point of 410,000, exiting between 500 and 530, it's a win-win for a flip for me.